What's up, nerds? Let's find uh, the recoil function of Salt Cube. Someone was talking about it, and uh, it's actually more complicated than you think, so I'm making this vid to show you. And then we're going to use what we find in the next tutorial I make. Um, you need to do the C++ trainer video that I already made, and you need to do all the videos that come before it. If you don't, you suck, and this video is not going to help you. Um, so from the last video, you're going to have this, uh, current weapon ammo pointer, right? It has the, uh, pointer to the local player address, which is right here. Um, add offset 374 and dereference it and you get the address of the weapon object. Add 14, dereference it and you get to the address of the dynamic ammo address. Um... You, so we're going to be using that because the recoil is harder to find than you think because, okay, we're in the game, right? And you shoot and your view cha your view angles change, right? Uh, there's some no spread and there, uh, I'm sorry, there's spread and then there's recoil. So you think what you're going to do is find out what writes to this address on your pitch angle, right? And then you're going to shoot your gun and, oh, look, no new instructions came up. We only have these two that are already there. Um, and if we look at these, these are basically functions that just, it's like the, the main routine of the game or for the client or whatever you want to call it. it it's not going to help you. Um, you're going to spend hours looking through there and you're not going to find what you're looking for. Um, so it's, it's more difficult than you think. So anytime something's more complicated than you think and you're not getting anywhere, you need to just start reversing something related to it and then the more and more you reverse the more and more everything will make sense and that's uh what i did today and i'm going to show you so uh we were not able to get anywhere with the angles and i'll tell you why you're going to see why later um but the current the weapon object we're just going to reverse some stuff in there and try to figure it out all right so we're going to look at this weapon object using reclass.net Let's attach to AC client. Thank you. And let's grab this stuff right here, right? AC client.exe, the pointer to our player object. Copy it. We're going to paste it in here. We're going to use our fancy syntax here. Round AC client.net with uh, angle brackets, and that's going to get the module address. And then we're going to surround the entire thing by regular brackets, and then that's going to dereference the pointer. And so this is going to be our entity object. We'll call it ent. You can see the RTTI tells us it's a player entity uh, inherited or derived from dinen, of fizen, of world object, of player state, uh, so on and so forth. And first thing you always want to do is you want to add a whole bunch of bytes so you can get a good look at what's going on. We already know there's like angles and position and stuff and health, and we're really not interested in that. What we want to look at is uh, offset 374, right? Let's go there, and it's a pointer to a player object, so we're going to uh, weapon object. So we're going to do change type, and we are going to go to class pointer. We're going to change it to point. Uh, we're going to call it current weapon, right? Expand that out, and this object is going to be a weapon object. Again, RTTI tells us it's a sub machine gun of the gun of the weapon, right? So if we scroll down here, let's add more bytes. So then I see the akimbo. And I think if I add even more bytes, I'm going to see even more weapons. I'm not sure what that stuff is. Uh, we're just going to ignore it. Yeah, I see sub gun and I see pistol. So obviously this is like in, this is like our inventory, right? Because I have a pistol and the submachine gun. Um, and so it's an array of these these weapon objects. Uh, first one starts here and the second one starts here. So we know that these objects are 30 bytes in size. Uh, hex 30. So let's delete those. Right, we only want to look at this one object here. And let's look at this. So we have a four, maybe that's like the weapon ID number. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Negative zero zero point one thing, I'm not sure. 
Uh, these are weird. So these are apparently pointers uh, on the heap. We have the string here. And so this is weird because because this could just be like a char pointer, right? It's a pointer to to the subgun string. Um, and so naturally, like with these pointers, you would change them to pointers, open them up and look at them. And you'd say like, OK, maybe there's something interesting in there. This is not very interesting to me at all. Uh, neither is this one. It's all zeros. So I, so I'm not really interested in those. This one, you know, this could have something decent in it that we want to look at. Um, what does this have? Oh, this is uh, pointing to our player object, right? Or... Uh, it ends in 6e0 and 6e0. Yeah, so that's our player object. So this is the, let's change this to point at ent. Let's call this the weapon owner pointer, right? Not that we need it. Um, so these, these in the end didn't end up having anything uh, important to me. So we're just going to reset those using 32. But this one, I actually did it by accident was I turned, even though it's a, I thought it was a char pointer, I changed it to a class pointer, opened it up, and obviously there's the string, and I said, what the hell, I always, I always add more bytes, and I look, right? So I scrolled down, and I thought this was weird. Uh, I then saw the sniper. So again, it's an array of these objects of identical size, right? Subgun, sniper. So I know the object ends where sniper begins. So I only want to look at the subgun object. I'm going to delete the rest. And you think like, okay, it's just a string. And then we have a ton of zeros. It's probably just points to nothing in memory that's important. And then I got down here and I thought to myself, maybe there's something here. Uh, this says it's a it's a pointer, right? It looks like it could be a pointer. Change it to a class pointer. Band it. AV camera reference hash table. Uh, doesn't look important to me. I think that's just that's just happens to point at that address, and it it's not actually like a logical pointer from the game logic. So let's reset that back to X32. So when I'm looking at this, um, I this is where I figured it all out. We're going to change the type to a 16-bit integer. And now this is going to start to make sense. I immediately saw this 30, and I said, hey, that's how much ammo we have in our magazine. What happens if I change it to 40? Okay, and then I shot my gun, and I reloaded, and now I have 40. So that's our mag size, right? So basically what I did is I, I just played with all these variables and two that I found for recoil were right here. If I change these both to zero uh, and then I shoot, right? I, I'm still getting this kickback effect and I'm still getting spread. But I'm not getting recoil. So that definitely interested me. So... I just call these recoil one, recoil two. They're probably like seed variables, um, right? So remember we saw the sniper in here too, I think it was. And so this is this is we up here we saw our our inventory array, our weapon array of weapons that we currently have. But down here, these are like constant variables used to to like initialize the uh, the weapon objects, right? Because the mag size is 40, right? You don't need that in your in your player object because the game should know how big the mag size is. You know, it's not something that's going to change. It's constant. So, right? So we've got these two recoil uh, offsets, right? So let's add them in here and and see what functions access them. So as always, we're going to copy that, add address manually. Uh, I think it's got three offsets, paste it in. 
first one's 374. Uh, is the second one 14? Right? 374. Oh, C. 374, C, 120. That changed it to two byte. Recoil. Something or other. So we're going to right click and do find out what access is. That's good. Nothing's showing up. And then we shoot once and something immediately shows up. So that's very good. And so we can see it's accessing both of these recoil variables. Uh, that is good. Now I am curious, right? So this is in EDI. Base dress is in EDI. Uh, let's um right click this select current function. Let's put a breakpoint at the top, and let's shoot our gun, and then we're we're breakpointed in the top of the function, and let's look in ECX, uh, 6AAB98, 6AAB98, right? That's the object, that's our weapon object. So this is a this call, so this is a member function, um, because uh, the this pointer, the address of the object is always passed in ECX. So that's definitely good to know. Log our breakpoint and rerun it. So now we want to know, like, what's this function all about, right? So if you press Control G, you're going to get the address of the function. You're going to copy it. So let's open Ida. Let's uh, press G to jump to an address. Let's paste in four six twenty twenty. There's our address uh, here for the function. Click F five to decompile it. We're going to call this the uh, recoil ab function and we can see it's it's a this call function um we know that the this pointer was being passed in ecx that's what that argument is and it takes two arguments um which we can see down here and i'm looking at this and uh the three member variables of these structures are our floats um, we're subtracting a float, we're subtracting another float, and we're subtracting the other float. So this is X, right? Y and Z. So this is the two vectors being subtracted. Um, it's, so these are the delta values that are these results. And the, the delta va uh, values are being squared. And then I guarantee you this is a square root function, which it is. I'm just going to call this a square root. And... Go back here. And so if you're familiar with it, this is the get 3D distance formula. That's what this whole thing is right here. So we know what that is. Um, there's some funky stuff going on here. Uh, we see this. It's a this call. Uh, it's a function prototyping, basically, a, a function pointer. And it's calling it with argument V3. So V3 gets its... Um, value from the this pointer. So it's just a copy of the this pointer. Right? So um, this pointer plus four is the function it's calling, and the variable it's passing to the function is the this pointer again, and then the result is going into V10. Um, so that, that kind of weirded me out first. I didn't understand what was going on. But the this pointer, right, it points to the object. Um, offset zero of the object is the V table of any structure that has uh, virtual functions. So when they're adding offset four, that's, that's getting to the second element of the array. So it's calling the second V table function is what it's doing. Um, and, and it's doing it here too, it's doing the same thing. Um, so that's what's going on here. Not sure what this is. Um, it's calculating if the result is greater than one, um, or anding some va some value that's a result from this function. Modulo operator dividing by two. 
multiplying by 20, variable 25. So I'm not sure what that is. Um, but as I'm scrolling down here, I noticed way down here at the bottom, we have these two offsets here. I'll right click them and we'll show them as hex. You'll see 120 and 122. Now those were the two offsets, um, remember from Sheet Engine that we had saw in a reclass for the two recoil variables. This is definitely a function that's calculating recoil. If I had to guess, I would say that um, they're basically, it looks like there's there's three sections here, right? One of these is probably the spread calculation. Maybe this is the kickback uh, calculation. And then maybe this is the recoil. Um, or maybe it's just recoil and spread. I'm not quite sure. But I'm sure now that this is the function for the recoil. So now we want to know where is the recoil function called. And then I'm just going to nop it and get rid of it so it never executes. So let's, so normally you'd right click it and do jump to cross references. So these are everywhere where this function's referenced. We only see it called once by address in the first call. And then the rest of these are just data offsets, right? So when we click here, these, these, these are all subroutines all in a row, right? So these are obviously um, B tables, right? Virtual function tables. Um, that's what those are. And if we go back to what we were just looking at with the cross references, um, the, we don't see in here, it's only called once by address. The rest of the times, uh, we don't see any other call. So surely this function's called more than once, right? I'm not sure. Um, it, could be, it could be only in this function. So let's, uh, let's open another plugin called Class Informer. This is going to pull all the runtime type information out of the binary. Um, anytime uh, something's compiled with Visual Studio, uh, if it has a virtual function, you will find the structure in this in the RTTI. And so what it gives you, it, it will typically give you the name of the structure and then uh, what it derives, the hierarchy of like what it derives from, what it inherits from. So let's do control F to find and we'll type in weapon. So we have the weapon structure and the submachine gun fu function. We know that uh, subgun obviously inherits from weapon. Uh, so we're definitely interested in these two structures. Let's look at the subgun. And we can see our recoil maybe function is right there. So I'm curious, you know, what, f what other functions uh, call the recoil maybe function? Um, but we did the jump to cross references and, and we didn't really, we only found the one. I'm curious, is it's not called anywhere else? Uh, maybe it's not. So I started to go through these functions um, and see what they could be uh, one at a time and uh, decompiling just to get a quick overview of what it is. You know, I usually try to check out the bigger functions because a lot of these are just like getters and setters or very simple calculations. I'm looking for something uh, more substantial. And when we get to this one, this one looks pretty big. So we decompile it. Scroll down. I'm looking for a, any sort of calling a function, um, maybe using um, that this call that we saw before. And I do see two. Um, let's see these offsets of hex. I see, I see 14. Um, and what does that mean? Well, if we go back to... So I won't be able to find it now. If we go back to the V table for subgun and we look at recoil maybe, right? Um, let's calculate the offset uh, here. So this is offset 0, 4, 8, C, 10, 14, right? So recoil mate, the recoil function is at offset 14. And if we look right here, we, see, we do see it being called right here. So this function calls it not by address, but it does it by indexing through into the V table. Uh, so let's look at this. I want to see that function in, uh, let's just call it quick. Uh, call recoil. So we know what we're looking at. Let's open that and see the assembly. And uh, go down to the bottom here.
want to see where it's calling it with offset 14. Okay, so there's offset 14 uh, being, so the address of the function in the V table gets moved into EDX maybe, and then we call EDX. So here's why uh, we can't do find out what access is, and we can't use um, uh, the cross-reference list because it's being called uh, by being pushed into a register and then the register is being called. So it's not going to be listed in cross-references. All right, so we need the address of this call here. So let's right-click, look at the text view. Uh, here's the call right here. Uh, if we press uh, G, uh, we'll copy the address. It's 46378E, so copy that. Thank you. Go to Cheat Engine. Uh, press Control G, paste in the address. That's our EDX call. Let's toggle the uh, breakpoint right there, and let's shoot our gun. And we we're currently breakpointed right on that call, right? And we see EDX is forty six twenty twenty. We can see uh, EDX is the address of the object, and fourteen is uh, the index uh, into into the V table. Um, so that's it, and we want to nop it. Um, so let's untoggle the breakpoint, let's run the game. Uh, so how are we going to do that? Um, well, I don't think, we can't just nop this, because there's going to be stack cleanup, right? Um, I think, We, we might be able to knock this whole thing. So the push starts here, right? So the stack is being set up. They're pushing arguments onto the stack. Um, I'm not, I don't think this is going to work. But let's knock them all and find out. So the latest cheat engine makes knopping really. You have to knop one at a time. One instruction at a time. Base code does nothing. All right, now let's shoot our gun. I, I think it worked. Hey, it worked. Hey, look, no recoil. Okay, cool. Um, that worked. Now, so what do we have to write 10, ten knops? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, 10 knops. Um, let's uh, restore these all with their original code. And let's show a different way of doing it. Right, so we know it's 46, 20, 20. So let's go to that function and look at it. What's another way that you can just like nullify and skip this whole thing? Well, you can, right here, you can do uh, assemble, right? And we just want to, we just want to return, right? So we can do like a rat. Um, but we need to clean up the stack, right? Because this call, um, the callee cleans up. So if we right-click this select current function, we can see the bottom of the function. Um, and this call does use the rat to do it. Um, so we see rat eight. So it's gonna we're gonna unwind eight bytes, right? Uh, right-click select current function again. Okay, so let's place this with return eight and it's a three bo three byte instruction but it's so but we're going to return so it's going to replace of uh, there's going to basically be a stolen byte that's never going to execute but we're returning anyways so it doesn't even matter all right so let's see if that worked too uh get ammo yeah so that also does the same thing just returning Anyway, that's uh, no recoil hack and assault cube. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to do how to uh, do that in C++, a couple other tricks, and then I'm moving on to an internal tutorial. Uh, this video I think was kind of long, and uh, but anytime we're doing reverse engineering, it's going to be like long and kind of boring. Um, but I hope you guys liked it and you learned something. Please give me your feedback on this video because I I like doing the reversing more than I like doing the coding videos. So maybe uh, you guys will dig it and I'll do more.
And uh, as always, if uh, if you like the videos, guidedhacking.com slash donate to donate at patreon.com patreon.com slash guided hacking if you want to subscribe there all right dudes peace